Hello and welcome to this latest video in the history of the Vale of Glamorgan series, today coming to you from the land of myths and legend that is Barry Island. Now a lot of people might find it a bit of a surprise that we have some ancient history relating to Barry Island. After all, it wasn't really until the latter part of the 19th century that there was much in the way of development and buildings here. And it wasn't really until the mid 20th century when Billy Butlin opened up his holiday camp, which put the place on the map in terms of holidays. But as we're about to discover, a lot earlier than that, this place was not so much synonymous with holidays as with holy days. Because the word holiday, as you may or may not know, originates from holy days talking about pilgrimages. Because in the medieval period, the only time people travelled was to go on a pilgrimage to visit a holy site. So predictably, our story begins around 1,500 years ago at just such a site. At the tail end of the 5th century, St. Caddick established his class, the monastery that stood in Llancarvan, where St. Caddick's church stands today. It was originally quite a large monastic settlement, and it owned a lot of land, including Barry Island. Barry Island was seen as a retreat, a place where monks could seek solitude. Now, one monk from Plancarven who made use of this spot was an Irish chap by the name of Barrack, and he was a hermit who lived in a cave somewhere around here. The legend goes that one day, while he was on this island, he remembered that he needed to read a holy book, which he knew to be on the nearby island of Flat Home. He took his trusty boat, he rowed out to the island, visited the monastery there, collected the book, and then set home. On his return journey, he got caught in a storm. He battled against the raging sea and the howling winds for as long as he could, but in the end, he was completely overpowered by the elements and his boat capsized. Several days later, his body was found here, washed up on the sands of Jackson Bay. Some locals gathered him up and interred him, and nothing more was thought of the matter. Then, some time later, some fishermen were fishing just off Barry Island, and they were delighted when they pulled in their nets to find a huge plump salmon thrashing around in their hall. Heaving it on board their boat, they cut it open to gut it, but what to their amazement do you think they found? The book that had cost Barrack his life, in perfect condition. There was clearly something a bit odd going on here. Not too long afterwards, people started reporting that if they drank from the waters of the well, which had sustained St Barrack in life, they were being cured. Miracles were being performed right here on Barry Island. Pretty soon, the story of the miracles of St. Barak and his holy well on Barry Island had spread throughout the nation, and people came far and wide on pilgrimages. The pilgrimage to visit the remains of St. Barak and the well that had sustained him in life and which was now performing miracles was such a popular one that they needed to build the chapel, the remains of which you can see behind me, just to cater for the number of people who would turn up here. You can still see the remains today, and here's a map showing roughly where they are on Nell's Point. The scale of what is here today was largely built in the 14th century, when this place as a place of pilgrimage was at its absolute height. Quite ironic that now we're standing beside a ruin surrounded by lots of buildings. When this was at its height, there have been no other buildings on the island besides this. We have an artist's impression of how it might have looked. So, if you've not heard these stories before, you may now be thinking, well, you know, that's interesting. Barry was clearly the lord of the Vale of Glamorgan, but that must have been quite a short-lived thing because I've never heard of it before. Well, here comes the final shocker. We can't be absolutely certain of when Barrack was around, but we suspect it was probably the beginning of the 7th century. We know that the remains of the chapel date back to the 14th century, so it clearly lasted until then. How is this for a shocker? These words you see before you now, describing the chapel of St. Barrack, where much pilgrimages was used, was written in 1536 by John Leyland. This place had lasted as a place of pilgrimage for between 900 and 1,000 years. So what happened to it? 
Why is the place in ruins? Why is, is Barry Island no longer considered to be the lure of the Vale of Glamorgan? Well, we have Henry VIII to thank for that. By 1546, the monastery at Llancarvan had been dissolved. All of its assets and buildings had been seized and either sold off or left to turn to rack and ruin. Uh, a mere shadow of its former self. Uh, and with the dissolution of Llancarvan, of course, which was the benefactor of the, uh, of the chapel on Barry Island, Barry Island also fell. Uh, so that's what happened to it as a place of pilgrimage. But that's not the end of the legends about Barry Island. In the 17th and 18th century, this place was famous as a stronghold for smugglers and for pirates, and there's no end of legends about that. But I would like to finish up with a slightly romantic story first published in 1909 by the author Marie Trevelyan. Now our next story is an abject lesson in the difference between legend and folklore. Legend, although tweaked, is at least based on something real. There is a little bit of history in there somewhere. Folklore, generally speaking, much more just about entertainment. Um, and we have a beautiful story, um, but I suspect originates from around about the 17th century, as it ties in with the descriptions that we have of the island at the time. It concerns two friends. A young man from Rus, you know the type, probably rather good looking and debonair, and wears a lot of tweed. The other was from Caddockston, and the two of them were labourers on the farmland here on the island. So, one day, they were toiling and labouring out in the sun, gathering in the harvest, when one of them happened to spot, out of the corner of his eye, two rather beautiful swans coming into land over the bay. The two men were distracted and came over to get a better look. And to their astonishment, they saw that as the two swans came to the beach, they pulled their wings to one side and revealed from underneath their feathers, they were in fact two beautiful maidens who bathed and frolicked and played in the bay. The two men were aghast. The chap from Caddockston hatched a plan sort of plan the chap from Roost would not have gone near because he was upstanding. He crawled down the cliff edge, close to where the two maidens were playing. He found their wings and feathers, gathered them up and scarpered with them to hide them away. When the two young maidens came from the sea, they begged and prayed for the return of their wings and feathers, but the men refused. The Smon maidens were forced to promise to become the wives of their captors. Ultimately, the wife of the Caddickston man was accidentally killed by being run over by a wagon. And when the people went to pick her up, she quitted her human form and flew away in the shape of a swan. The man from Roos, after seven years of happy married life, threw the swan wings with other rubbish out into the farmyard. His wife went out to examine the collection and finding the old plumage, Put it on. A few minutes later, the husband saw his wife slowly flying away in the shape of a swan. The children of these marriages were said to be somewhat conspicuous by reason of their swan-shaped necks. I must confess this story isn't a barrel of laughs, but then I had some footage of some swans, so I thought I'd use it. So there we have it. Two very different stories from two very different points in history, both of which centred on Barry Island, land of myths and legends. So look, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe even learnt something new about the legends and the myths and the folklore that surrounds Barry Island. If that's your bag and you'd like to know more, then the story that we covered in today's episode is also covered in depth in this book. It's called More Legends and Folklore from Barry, Bridgend and the Vale. It covers a multitude of stories, uh, some of them based on history, others much more about entertaining, like the latter one, for example. Uh, and they're all from places you will know, between Cardiff, Swansea, Llantrisant and the coast, and everywhere in between. It's available from all good bookshops, it's available from Amazon, and it's available direct from me, uh, from my website at a discounted price, and there'll be a link at the end. 
Also, if you're interested in watching more videos on local history and local myths and legends, that's exactly what my YouTube channel is all about. So please subscribe to this channel, uh, use a Graham Lovelock, there's a link at the end, uh, and then you'll get updates every time I upload a new one. So look, until the next time we meet, enjoy history. Thank you.